It stands 12 feet tall, with razor-sharp claws. His hide littered with the weapons of fallen warriors. His face scarred with one dead eye. I drew my sword and... Trump! Dad's leg was clean off. Oh, that's my favorite part. <laughs> In accordance with our laws, the firstborn of each of the great leaders must prove their worth. Merida, stop! A lady enjoys elegant oh. pursuits. I present my only son. He took out a whole armada single-handedly. He was With one arm. He was stealing the ship. Uh, well, I'm going to begin with uh, mentioning the elephant in the room, the, the kilt. I love that you wear the kilt. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, the old kilt is on, yes. But yeah, you're in, in the spirit of the film. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Awesome, absolutely. awesome. Well, I like the movie, and it really has two tones. And I was wondering, as a director and a producer, if you could talk about the two tones of the film and sort of juggling and balancing those. We love that question because it brings us to the duality in the film. Which that's the right, that's right. One of the big themes, I mean, the film's all about transitions, right? And she's, you know, this young woman who's moving from adolescence to adulthood. So there you have kind of the kid side of things that are fun and lighthearted, mm -hmm. and then you have the adult side of things which consequences have meanings, you know, they're serious. So that's kind of the two aspects of the film that we do have to get a balance for, you know, uh, as we're constructing the story. Um, it does get a little scary, you know, but that's balanced with the great humor on the other hand. We do have action that's balanced with these tender moments, you know. We have very emotional parts, tender with the great humor, you know, that comes out of the film. So I think that's what, as a storyteller, is really juicy mm. about a film like Brave is that it has all of these elements. Um, when you're doing it really well, they're all woven in, and it's never a dull moment in the picture. We felt like this movie needed to have kind of the, 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 the two tones and the range of tones because it's about a family, and you know what family doesn't have these like yeah. big drama right. and big adventure and you know also big humor, everything from the, your dinner table conversation to um, you know the, the big events that shape a family's life. So if it's about a family, it has to have that. It has to have that in it. It's, it can never be all one thing. Obviously, this is a Pixar film feels very much like a Disney movie. Can you kind of talk about that? It, you know, what do you think it is? A, is it a Disney movie inside a Pixar movie? Pixar and Disney, or is, or is it- like a mind trip question. Or because, <laughs> or because, you know, Mr. Lassiter is in charge of everything now, does it just sort of, the two kind of bleed together? Mm -hmm. no, no, I mean, we're not out to make a Disney picture or to have something fill, fill, uh, fit inside their canon. We want our own film. We're, we're making a Pixar hero as Catherine likes to say all the time. Um, we're creating a Pixar hero. It's, it's you know, a princess movie done in Pixar's mm. style, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, we want to be much more, you know, grounded. We want to be much more authentic, you know? And, and, and it comes all out of these characters, you know, this, this parent-child relationship, this family dynamic is where we're going. Um, and it's original versus Disney and we love the Disney, you know, films and their fairy tales. You know, they're pulling from well-known source material. This is all brand new from top to bottom. I think also we wanted to to show um, a, a kind of an action hero girl who, despite the fact that we grew up on the sort of Disney classic uh, tales and princesses, and we always love those, that this was much more about you know Pixar's take was going to be. Um, Fresh. She's athletic. She's adventurous. And there's, you know, there's no Prince Charming. Not to ruin it for you, but you saw it, you know. <laughs> and but also, you know, she she drives the story forward. She makes her own decisions. She makes her own mistakes. You know, she has to fix them herself. And the fact that she's royalty, I think some people have said, well, royalty reminiscent of a of a classic Disney princess. It's like, well, the royalty here is not because we wanted a princess necessarily. It's because really the stakes of the story. It's important that she have this royal lineage, or else um, she, as a, a maid servant or something, doesn't want to get married. It's like, oh well, whatever. But you know right. she she's royal. The, the repercussions and the ripple effects for any bad decision are, are are immense. The whole kingdom could go to war, and so that's why she's royal. You know, it's it's not because we wanted to have a princess. It's because we wanted to have this this teenager in an ancient time whose whose decisions have real impact. 
Yeah. Was it essential to cast authentic Scottish actors with those authentic Scottish voices for the for the voices? Not not essential. We knew that they would have to whoever we cast would have to at least do a Scottish accent. Um, absolutely. Um, but when we're casting at Pixar, we we just want to find the best fit for the character because they're gonna they're gonna embody the character. They're gonna give that character that life and that soul in that voice. So it really has to fit with the way we've designed and, and, and built the character. So, you know, for King Fergus, for example, um, we're looking at, at him and he's this big boisterous storyteller, you know, who's this great family man too and a fun dad. And, you know, who more fun than Billy Connolly came, comes to mind, you know? And he's Scottish, so fantastic. <laughs> but then you have Emma Thompson, right, who is not Scottish, you know, she's she's English, you know, though she has some Scottish heritage, but Queen Eleanor is regal and powerful, but then can be funny, and we, who more can give us permission to laugh at her than Emma Thompson, who could totally be dead serious, but then saying I'm just yeah. messing with you, you know, so you needed that, again, that duality in that character, and Emma Thompson came to mind. Somebody to be that commanding, but that funny at the same time. Yeah. And on and on and on with all the characters, finding those right fits. The Scottishness was really a great help, though. Whenever we had Scottish voice actors, they taught us so many words, and, you know, uh, we we learned a uh, whole we we you know had looked up a bunch of words we had our own Scottish isms in the script but once we would get on the stage with these actors they would have all kinds of other great words well like, oh, we could use that we could use that and we just need to make sure we knew what it meant so that we didn't get in trouble Billy Connolly's <laughs> words some of them were a little more colorful right right they were not <laughs> appropriate for a Pixar film yeah. I want my freedom but are you willing to pay the price your freedom will cost. Careful what you wish for, my mother would say. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah! No more fighting! Show a little decorum! Feast your eyes! If you had the chance to change your fate, would you?